ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me just say how glad I am on behalf of the government and people of Barbados to welcome the president of the Inter-American Development Bank, President Luis Alberto Moreno, who is a good friend um, to this country and who has been president for, I think he's in his third term now. I can assure the people of Barbados that he's not teaching me how to become a third term leader. <laughs> but I will learn from him to be a second term leader. <laughs> um, no, we had a very good discussion this morning as to the opportunities. Barbados regrettably has not been as good as we should have been um, over the course of the last few years or more with respect to the disbursement. There were five loans that were cancelled with the bank between 2016 and 2017. Um, I'm not sure how a country that needs concessional funding can engage in the luxury of having loans cancelled and we've promised that that has to be a thing of the past, that we need to be able to reposition our country. Our disbursement rate, regrettably, is among the lowest, if not the lowest, in the hemisphere at 13 percent. Jamaica's is at 32 percent. And that gives you an idea of where the disparity lies between Barbados um, and some of the other countries in the region. We have a loan portfolio with the IDB of 191 million US and 135.7 million of that 191 remains undisbursed in spite of the fact that many of these loans have been in place for three, four, five years. And as a result, there are at least two, three major loans that are at risk that we are going to have and we've undertaken with the bank to try to put them in good shape again, um, even if it means some tweaking. Um, and I refer to a loan to strengthen human and social development um, in Barbados. That is nine-tenths, 90% 90 of that remains undisbursed. And that loan was signed since September 2015. The road rehabilitation program, which is 25 million US dollars, um, and 24.7 million US dollars remains undisbursed. In other words, we spent 300,000 US dollars, even though that loan was signed in November 2015, and I'm sure Barbadians would be surprised given the state of our roads today. And the smart energy program, um, we literally have the deployment of cleaner fuels program, sorry, and renewable energies in Barbados, which is 34 million US, and 32.2 .2 million US remains available and not dispersed, even though that loan was signed almost two years ago. So that I think that the president and ourselves, the members of the bank in Barbados, um, and the person responsible for our region, Therese Turner-Jones, who is no stranger to Barbados, and of course the country rep, we all agree that this is an untenable situation. Um, first and foremost, the Ministry of Economic Affairs with Minister Cattle has been given the responsibility of trying to get these um, loans fully functional again and to increase our disbursement ratio. But separate and apart from that, we've also discussed the need for some urgent um, measures and tweaking with respect to how we function, the need for the, us to be able to better monitor delivery. We're conscious that we go now into a period that is slightly different from, or very much different from what we would have in the past as we enter into negotiations with a fund program with the International Monetary Fund. The president has already been speaking to the IMF, so he's fully aware of where we are with them on that. Um, secondly, that we are also in the process of debt restructuring, and that in and of itself creates issues. But what it does is to make it absolutely clear to us and to everyone that our major sources of funding will be um, concessional funding from the international and regional financial institutions as we go forward in the next few years. So it is absolutely critical that we get this right. Um, I must say, Mr. President, that the people of Barbados are humbled that you would, within the early life of this government and within all that is going on with us financially and economically, that you would leave Washington and come to stand by us at this point in time. We see this as a tremendous gesture of friendship 
and I say thank you on behalf of the government and people of Barbados for r putting your body through this kind of rigor. Um, I know what a 24-hour trip can do to you, um, but we really are very grateful for your expression of friendship to us at this time as we go through these challenging moments. Um, there are some clear opportunities that we've agreed that we must work on. We find ourselves in the middle of the hurricane season, as all Barbadians know, and to that extent, the question of us being able to be better prepared with respect to our shelters, with respect to access to generators, um, other materials, pharmaceuticals, etc., because we all know that the immediate period after a disaster, the first week to two weeks, is in fact the one where there is the greatest threat of a lack of stability and security and where the greatest risk to life comes and loss of property as well. In the circumstances, I think we've agreed that we may want to relook some of our existing loans to see how best we can tweak it. Um, the government in the budget, as you know, would have made available $5 million. Um, it's a modest effort and therefore anything else that we can do to be able to beef up our disaster mitigation efforts and our build our resilience in the short term while working towards the long term with respect to our other major um, loan portfolio that we will negotiate with the bank. Um, we're also aware of grants that will, a grant, particular grant that may help us to move to what we call an electronic dashboard. That's just a fancy phrase for us being able to monitor every one of the loans that we're not disbursing properly using this so that any hour of day or night I need to be able to pick up my phone and know what's the state with the roads loan, what's the state with the loan for clean energy, what's the state with the loan for um, skills for the future. Is it being blocked because a resolution needs to go to Parliament or is it a housing acquisition matter, land acquisition matter in terms of the expansion of a road? Is it a fiscal matter in terms of funding? Is it a matter that we don't have enough people working in a project unit? So once we know where the problem is, no different from a person who is sick, if we know where the pain is, we can deal with it once we find out what the underlying condition is. And that electronic dashboard brings us into the 21st century rather than us operating in the mid-20th century to execute loans in a digital world. The last thing, and I'm very happy, two, two other points or I'm happy about that our discussion has further reinforced this morning. Um, as I indicated, we're in the middle of discussions with the IMF for a program. And the realization that the SDL, which the bank has, um, that will make available to the country the equivalent of 2% of GDP upon the settlement of a, an agreement with the International Monetary Fund is absolutely critical for us um, to know. And I'm sure the Director of Finance is, is very happy to hear that because that 2% of GDP on top of whatever agreement we reach with the IMF is going to be important in helping us to finance our way out in terms of government's program. And similarly, that without prejudice to that, we then will start the work on the policy-based lending, which is quicker disbursement but gives the government greater flexibility than their traditional investment loans, which are the other ones that we have traditionally used because of an inability of the country to meet the macroeconomic fundamentals that the American Development Bank would have required over the last few years. That's why we kept saying that it was absolutely critical for us to enter an arrangement that would give the international financial community and the local and regional ones for that matter comfort that we are taking hold of our fiscal position and bringing about the macroeconomic fundamentals that everybody would be calling for if they want to do business with our country. In a sense, that is what was being telegraphed to us with each successive downgrade of the 23 that took place. Um, the other good news is, but we hope never to have to use it, is that the bank does have available a mechanism that we need to discuss with them, a credit contingent facility that in the event of a hurricane, God forbid, and that's my greatest fear for this year, um, but in the event of a hurricane, that the bank will disperse, um, or any natural disaster for that matter, 2% of GDP again in credit to allow the country to be able to move expeditiously, to be able to 
meet the immediate concerns and needs. Um, as I said, the issue of property and life are absolutely important to us to take care of in a disaster. We saw it in Dominica. Um, I was in Gilbert in Jamaica almost 30 years ago. I know what it is to stand up in a line outside of a supermarket for two hours and to wait to get six batteries, two packs of sweet biscuits and eight candles because that's all the supermarket was dispersing. I know what it was to have gastro and not be able to receive any kind of pharmaceutical or treatment within 48 hours of the kind of hurricane that Gilbert was. Um, so God forbid, I don't want Barbadians ever to have to go through that. But if we ever do, to know that we can have access to almost um, $200 million within days to be able to meet our immediate needs as a country yeah. is heartwarming because I've seen what happened in Dominica with respect to a, an economy effectively imploding within hours and people not having the ability to buy what they need for the most basic aspects of their, of their survival. So we are happy, Mr. President, to hear about this, but more importantly, we are happy for the expression of friendship. Um, Barbados is a country that is premised on values more than anything else. That's why um, our foreign policy has been consistent when we talk about friends of all, satellites of none. It's really not an arrogant statement, but it is a statement that says that values matter to us. And I don't know how, therefore, to appropriately express our gratitude for this symbol of your absolute friendship by putting your body through this rigor and to come here for 24 hours to meet with us. Similarly, um, Therese, you have been a friend. In a previous life, I know you've had a different role living in this country. And we like to say that we take Barbadians not just by birth, um, by marriage, by descent, but also by choice. And since you already start with the advantage of BA, um, we can take you as a Bahamian, we can take you very easily. So, um, I also want to use this opportunity, Mr. President, if you would allow me, um, to thank our two persons who are with us. Um, Jerry um, has been the executive director for the Caribbean region. I believe his term of office comes to an end very shortly, within a matter of days. But I'd like to salute you because his friendship has not just been recent, but it's been long, it's been enduring. And I learned to my peril this morning that his memory is as enduring, <laughs> um, since he can recall phrases that I made in Brazil um, 11 years ago. But we wish him all the very best, and we know that wherever else he ends up, he will continue to be an ally and a friend to the people of Barbados. Um, similarly, Cheryl Morris Keith, who has been working in Washington, D.C., for the country for the better part of the last decade as well with the IDB. I want to thank her for her service and her continued commitment to country and to say to everyone that um, I saw her last week in DC and it's good to see you at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. President, I hand over to you, sir. Thank you, Prime Minister, and, and thank you all for, for being here. I, first of all, uh, I've had the privilege of knowing Prime Minister Motley for uh, the time I've been at the IDB, almost uh, uh, 13 years now, and I know of her commitment and I know of her love of this country. And uh, she and I discussed along the way many times the need to, to say it very candidly, to bite the bullet and do some of the things that she is embarking on doing for the good of all the people of Barbados. And when I saw that, it was my immediate reaction to get on the phone and to say we're here to help because when leaders take those kinds of decisions and when they decide to confront the issues of a country, they deserve all the help and all the friends. So that is the fundamental reason I'm here. Uh, it will be many trips, it will be many times, not only from me but certainly from many of my colleagues as we embark on this new uh, a day that uh, uh, Prime Minister Motley is trying to bring to all of the people uh, of Barbados. And in that regard, 
this is an effort where everybody has to chip in. Uh, this is an effort of the whole of society of uh, Barbados. And in that context, we realize, as she does, that there are people in Barbados who are going to be suffering that require a response. And in that regard, we are thinking and working and will be working on ways to help in that, those social safety nets. But we have many challenges at the same time. I am convinced that you have the leadership in place, especially you know where this needs to go. I have had, as Prime Minister mentioned, the opportunity to, as late as last Friday, to meet with Christine Lagarde, and we talked extensively about how we can collectively help uh, Barbados in, in this challenging time. But I am convinced that as we go forward, and as many of these programs are in place, the IDB's role is going to be more than uh, supporting balance of payments issues, it will be supporting all of the development issues of the country. And this is where dealing with natural disasters, dealing with the needs that every person in Barbados knows, the lack of roads or the lack of quality of roads, the problems of water and sanitation, the problems of education, all of these challenges, especially as we look at, at this uh, revolution of technology that we're living, how we can deal uh, with this fourth industrial revolution. And in this regard, we have some ideas that we're going to be working together with the prime minister. And finally, this requires that the private sector do its share. And for the private sector to do its share is going to require financing. And we are equally uh, in that space ready to help because, as I said before, everybody has to chip in. And if you're a long-term vision of any businessman in this country, uh, this is the time to tighten the, the, the belt, but at the same time think that you should be able to have more employees, you should be able to make a bigger effort, and we are there to precisely help in that effort. So this is the reason we're here. Uh, we believe in your leadership, and we believe that this is the, the kind of way forward for uh, Barbados. So thank you again for, you. for your words. And, and it's going to be a lot of work, but it's always uh, a great experience to come uh, to Barbados. So thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. President. You. Let me thank just you. say to you that um, we have a meeting with the social partnership on Friday morning. And as to your last point with respect to the private sector, we would be happy to entertain um, a presentation from the country representative because we do recognize that um, the consequences for our private sector in a post-debt restructuring world um, are also different. And therefore, we do need to ensure that they too ha can have access to um, your the private sector arm of the IDB and the IFC and other entities that are available to it as much as possible. So. On behalf of the people of Barbados, thank you once again. Thank you. And I look forward to ensuring that on this journey that we not only walk long and strong, but that we reach a destination that makes each of us happy on behalf of our individual constituencies. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you.